Hi everybody, it's Lane, and we are back with day number 10 of 31 days of Q&As. And I have a very fun question, I think this is a fun one today. And it's from Linda who says, Hi Lane, I am getting a lot out of these videos so far. I have the blessing of having a room for scrapbooking and everything I need. When I am in the pages working, I love it. The problem I have is that I walk in fully motivated to create, have an hour or two to spend even, but get confused over where to start. My question is this, how do you decide what to work on and how to focus and get something completed? I can spend my whole time just deciding what to do. Now, Linda, I think we have all been there where we are all set to create and then we sit down and we have no idea. Um, we either have too many ideas going at once or we've got too few going at once. And my big recommendation is um, to know how you work. So I oftentimes am story driven where I know what story I want to create and then I go look for photos to match that story. Other times though, and other people are photo driven where they see a photo and then that I think oftentimes we scrapbook and at least start scrapbooking this manner where we're very photo driven. We get our photos developed, we go through them, we find one that, that uh, captures our eye and we start there. But, um, and then other people are product folk, uh, focused or product driven and they just like sitting down and playing with the, the product and might create a whole page without a photo on it and then add the photo, the photo at the end. Other people might be design oriented. So um, I would spend some time thinking, just kind of observing yourself and thinking about, okay, when I sit down to scrapbook, what's my normal habit? Do I reach for my photos first? Do I sit down and start journaling first? Where is my normal starting point? Now, my next question is to see if that starting point works for you. And the only way to see if it's the most efficient way to scrapbook your stories is to try other manners. So if you typically start with the photos, as I mentioned, many of us do that, next time start somewhere else. Start with a memory or a story you wanna capture. Think of something that happened in the last three to six months that you know you probably have a photo of so you don't let that be a um, roadblock to creating your page. Um, Think about that event and start with that story and maybe even jot down a few words or a few emotions that you want to capture on that page and try that manner. Another time when you sit down to scrapbook, start by le leafing through your pattern paper or your ribbon or something that you really love, a, a recent kit that you've received. Start with the product and see how that feels for you. Each of us is going to be driven in a different manner. I would say most of us are driven by either photos or stories, but uh, to play around with it. Spend some time experimenting to see what really works for you. You also might want to leaf through a um, scrapbook magazine or it, go to an online gallery and see what other people are capturing, see what grabs your eye, and then see where you take that from there. What grabbed your eye about it? Was it the title? Was it the colors? Was it the photo? Was it the story? Um, and then start at that point. And again, just spend about a week or two weeks experimenting with these different ways of getting into your page. Then, once you find something that feels really good to you, you may find that that in and of itself re-energizes you and gives you enough to go on. Um, you also might find you like changing it up each time. Like I mentioned, I'm primarily story oriented, but every once in a while I'll start from the other end. I'll start from a design or I'll start from a product just to keep it mixed up and see how I respond and what comes out. Um, by trying a different path to the completed page. That's something that I hear a lot when we do layout a day, when the, we do the month long challenges. Each day we have a prompt and some of the prompts might be word driven. Some of them might be photo driven. Some of them might be memory driven. And people say that they come up with pages that they never would have scrapbooked if they had taken their normal path to the completed page. So just like you try a different way to drive to work or drive to the store, try a different way to get to the completed page. Something else that helps me a lot is to keep a running list of layouts I want to complete. It might just be something as simple as the kids' first day of school or um, Ben winning the wrestling tournament or I need to do a page about my mom's brothers and sisters, um, something like that. Keeping that running list also gives me a starting point when I come in and I know I want a scrapbook and I don't know where to start. Um, one final thing is you mentioned that you do have a space in which you can scrapbook and all the supplies you could ever need. Sometimes it's too much and that gives, gets us overwhelmed as well. So sometimes you might just need a little prompt like um, pick a, a, a pattern paper scrap from the top of your scrap pile and use that. And that might be enough to get you 
over that kind of empty canvas or empty page syndrome that a lot of people um, face when they're scrapbooking or writing. So don't let scrapper's block beat you. Hopefully this, um, this video has given you some suggestions and specific techniques that you can use the next time you have some time to scrapbook to get down your stories because as you know, your stories matter. So don't forget email support at layoutaday.com. Let Kelly know that you are a winner from day number 10 and everybody else, you're winners too. But if you want to win a prize, you got to submit a question and do it by sending it here. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.